Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode of how to change the background color of your website. And this and in this video I want to look at making an animated background. So in the last one I made um, how to change the background color of the web page. I did mention that I was going to look at animation and uh, animating the background. So that's what I'm doing in this one. All right, so we'll start off with the la where we were last time. Okay, I'll just, this is, uh, by the way, that was OBS Studio, um, program to capture what's on the screen. You can also use it for st streaming. And this, uh, this editor is Notepad++. I'm just going to adjust these um, font size so it's easy for you to see. Okay. And as I was in the last video, the um, let me just check that again. I'm using plastic code wrap, as you can see um, up here. Plastic code wrap is the theme I'm using. Okay, so so what we've done in the last one? Yeah, we just made the simple. Uh, linear gradient. Actually, before I had it as a, you can have it to right. Actually, I'll leave it as what we had originally, to right. And we'll see that that changes the background from an angle to like vertical colors. Okay, so that's what it was. How can we avoid these ads? Ads in the background. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, and then we had a color, this said one ID gradient and a class silver. Now, I didn't need to make it a, an ID because I can reuse this. So, it's not just for a particular element. So, I'm going to make it a, sorry. I'm going to make it a class, so just changing the hash to a dot. We'll make it a class. And then down where I've used it, instead of saying ID equals, class equals. Okay, and that's really not going to change much. It's just the way we've named it, the naming convention. And, and then, oh, it did actually change something. So what we've done there is we've, because we've put two classes in, it's only picked up the first one. So We'll take off the second class wording and we'll put them both in the one uh, set of single quotes. All right, so now it'll pick up both classes. All right. And to animate this, it's, it's a lot easier than I thought. So CSS3 already has the animate function, animate protocol class you can not a class it's a um, it's like an element a, a style element so it's just the word animate animation sorry animation and and then you put in the um, the name of the animation we'll call it um, M back percent moving for moving background. Okay, moving background, and then the length of the animation. We'll just make it say five seconds, and then there's all different styles of animation: ease in, ease out, linear, etc. So I'm just going to do ease, and then the number of iterations. So I'm going to make it infinite. So it just is ongoing as long as the uh, web page is open. Okay, so that's that. And you can you can put in other things related to the animation, such as the animation, uh, the state of the animation, whether it's paused or running. Um, so once you've done the animation, 
you make another um, class that picks up that um, name of the animation. So this is key called keyframe. So it's actually um, you call it by going at keyframes, and then you name the name you called it. So this in this case was M back, and then the curly brackets, and then then you uh, set the number of keyframes. You can just do as many as you like. You can do it is for example like at 10%, at 20%, etc. So I've already written this code, so I'll just bring this back over. Um, yeah, in this one, I've put in an animation fill mode forward. So basically, that that does is once the animation has completed, um, it will use the last state of the animation in the pausing while well, it's paused. But in this case, if it's infinite, you don't need um, pause. But actually, this is actually the class of something else I was doing up here, the one I was going to use. Okay, so this is background size. Oh yes, that's very important. The background size. In this case, anyway. Alright, so at keyframes M back. I'll just copy the whole thing. And move it across. So I'll just make sure the one I did up the top was correct. I did anim animation M back five seconds easy. Input. Yep, so that's correct. And also, I'll explain this in a moment about the background size. I'll just put up, put that up there as well. Background size. Actually, I'll comment it out and show you what it's like without it first. And and says so this uh, keyframes. So at keyframes, it's like a, a frame in a movie. You could imagine it. So at this percent of the um, length of the animation. So we've made ours five seconds, made this one five seconds. So 50%, so that would be at 2.5 seconds. All right, so you're defining the style as it is at those points in the animation. So what we're doing is we're using the positioning of the background. All right, so it's there and it's not doing anything. So if I move the angle of the gradient to instead of being vertical it's not moving because you can't see it moving even though it is moving because it's it's going from it's moving vertically and the colors are already aligned vertically so even though it may be moving up and down you can't see it because it's already vertical so if we move the angle of the gradient to the to a slant Instead of vertical, make it 45 degrees. We should be able to see some movement. Should be able to if the background size is increased, now which we haven't uncommented. Okay, so I'll go back to the two right, so vertical, which is the same as zero degrees, by the way. Um, zero degrees. Um, so uncomment the background size, so it's 300 degrees now. And 300 size the normal size. Oh, <laughs> sorry. We can really see it moving now. That's only because it's not zero degrees, it's 90 degrees is the same as vertical in this case. So I'll go back to that. Oh, all right. So we can see it now not moving because it has stretched it out 300 degrees, 300 percent, but it's moving downwards. So we can't notice because it's, um, it's already vertical. So if we move it to the 45 degrees, we should be able to see it moving because it's going downwards and if it's at 45 degree angle when we move it downwards we can see the color change all right so we can see it moving 
you can see a little change there. See how the orange there comes back to yellow. But that's not quite what we want because we can't see the blue and the green. So to do that, we're going to change this background positioning to 50 for the um, horizontal position as well. So it's moving horizontally and 50 for the vertical is all we'd need for that. There we go. So we can see all of these colors moving across now. If we put this as like 100, 100, let's check that out. Hmm. Really stretches across the page, doesn't it? If we made this size 500%, 500%, the um, gradients are going to be wider, aren't they? So let's put that 500%. Now the it'll move even faster to get across within the five seconds. Yeah. And so if we slow it down a bit to 10 seconds and make the background size, I don't know, 300's fine, as we had it before. Let's check that out. So it's slower. It looks all right. To make it even slower, 20 seconds for the whole transition. That's really slow. All right. So a gradual transi transition of the colors. What's up, mate? It's like my rainbow background. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so that's the basics of animation. <coughs> 